Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make a no sew, no knot tying fleece blanket. So let's take a look at this. Isn't this pretty? A nice little fluffy blanket. Really, really easy to make. Now here on the front, I've used this little fun mousse print. And then on the back, I selected a plain fleece that's green that goes with the green on the front. Now you can use the same print on the back as you do on the front. Now I want you to focus on how these little pieces of fringe are uh, stuck together like this. Now it's not tied. The reason why this is so appealing to me is a few years ago I lost oh maybe 95 percent of the use of my right hand so I cannot tie a knot to save my soul. So this little technique was great. I was able to do it with pretty much one hand and one thumb. Okay so let's take a look at what you need to get. Alrighty, so like I said, I selected two different pieces of fleece. Here's what I have on the back and then here's the one on the front. Now I purchased one and a half yards of each. One and a half yards. So if you're going to do the same fleece on the back and front, then purchase three yards. Okay? Then bring the back sides of the fleece together. Now if you look at your fleece, you can still see the print through this, but it's a little bit lighter on the back. So make sure you have the front side of your top piece facing up. And then whatever you're using on the back, if it's plain, you don't need to worry about it. But if it's a print, you want the front side of it facing down. So you have the back sides of both fabrics together. Then you want to straighten all your edges out and make sure you cut off this selvage. You'll see that it kind of rolls up. That's called selvage. So you want to cut all of that off. Now if you're using a rotary cutter to trim it, make sure you have a rotary cutting mat underneath or you can just use scissors. So go ahead and cut all of those edges straight and I'm going to put this away. Now I want you to look at my next sample here. All right, this is just a small version, but the process is the same no matter what size you're making it. So out of each corner, you're going to cut out a square. And you can cut your square out anywhere from three to four inches. And you need to determine what length you want your fringe, and that determines how much you cut out of each corner. So I'm going to cut a three and a half inch corner, which means my fringe will also be three and a half inches long. So you can take a ruler, place it down in the corner. Now I've put my three and a half inch mark on the ruler on the raw edge. So either using scissors or a rotary cutter, go ahead and cut the corner out. You're going to do this at all four corners. Okay, so now let's focus up here. Now you want to take a ruler and you're going to place the ruler from this corner to that corner. Okay, and line it up, which for me it's still that three and a half inch width. So line it up. Now you're going to take painter's tape. Okay, and place it along here like that. Alright, real easy to do. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Okay, so once you've got the tape on there, now you want to take either scissors or a rotary cutter. Remember, don't forget if you're using a rotary cutter, you need to have a rotary cutting mat underneath. Otherwise, you're going to cut up your floor or your table. Now you can cut the width of your fringe anywhere from one and a quarter inches to one and a half. I wouldn't make it any less than that because I think it's going to make it too weak. So you want to have it at least that. So then line up your uh, measurement right here on the raw edge of the fringe or where you're going to cut your fringe 
and then go ahead and cut. Then move it over, line it up again on the previously cut edge and cut again. And you're just going to keep going across until you get all the way to the end. So we're going to go down here. Okay, so now you've got everything cut. Now you want to either use something like this. These are rag quilt cutting shears. These are very, very sharp. I would not give it to a small child to use. They're very, very sharp. If you're going to use regular scissors, make sure they're very sharp. All right, so now you're going to grab both layers of the fringe. Grab both and you're going to fold it towards the tape. Now, don't have the fold line up here by the tape. You're going to have your fold line back here about a half an inch. So fold it over, okay? Hold it down and then take your scissors or the shears and you're just going to do a little snip, okay? Leave it folded. Go and do the next one and snip. And you're just going to keep going down that row, okay? Keep going all the way down and you're going to leave it folded. Don't unfold because this is going to be a really fast way to get it done. So you've cut all your holes. Now you want to take the first one and you're going to work your way back in the other direction. Push it through the hole and just tug on it a little bit. Okay and go and do the next one. And like I said, if I can do it with one hand, you can do it, okay? And do the next one. Keep going all the way down this row till you've got them all tied. Then go to the next side. Do the same thing. So you're gonna repeat this all on all four sides. And then guess what? you're done. So let's take a look at the fleece blanket again. Okay, look at this. This is so nice and fluffy. It was so easy to do. And again, a great starter project for anybody who wants to get involved in crafts. Also a great project for your children. And please be cautious when giving rotary cutters or scissors to small children. They can be very dangerous, so please be cautious. This was a great project. They make fantastic gifts. Christmas is not that far around the corner again. All right, now if you want to get more involved in other types of little blankets, here is a rag quilt. This requires just being able to kind of do a straight stitch. Really, really easy project. Very, very fast. And this is what you would use those rag uh, quilt cutting shears on. This is so much fun and so pretty. Now, if you want to keep involved, or keep informed, I should say, on all of these videos, you want to click on subscribe. Subscribe to the Sewing Room channel. We put out a lot of videos all the time. So, Click on either in the lower left-hand corner or right-hand corner for you. And up here in your upper left-hand corner is a round picture of my face. They're both subscribe buttons. Click on either one. Once you do that, YouTube's going to prompt you for your email address. Very, very important you enter the email address. Once you do that, the next time I have a new video, YouTube sends you a brief email with a big old button in the center. You click on on it and it takes you directly to my latest video. I'm Cheryl and I'm so glad you came to my sewing room and I'm going to see you next time and happy sewing!